morning, my friends. Good morning. Today's daf Yomi is Moed Katan, Chaf Beis, Moed Katan 22. So the rabbis say, Tana Rabbanan, Avel Gimel Yomim Arishonim, a mourner, we're on the bottom of 21 B, five lines from the bottom, a mourner the first three days, Bami Makam Karov, he comes from a close place, Mone Imayim, then he's able to count with the people who are sitting Shiva, he's just able to join them. But I mean, what's a close place? So it says 10 parasos. We, we, so maybe a one day journey. But Bami Makam Rachok, but if he comes from a faraway place, then Mona no, he counts on his own. He sits Shiva, he counts his number of Shiva, his days of Shiva by himself. From that point on, from after, from, from, from that point on, I mean, after the first three days, I feel Bami Makam Karov, even if he comes from a close place, Mono Atzmo, he counts on his own. After three days, he counts on his own. Whereas Rabbi Shimon says, I feel Bobby Yomashvi, Mi Makam Karov. So Rabbi Shimon is most lenient. He says, even if he comes on day seven from a close place, I feel Bobby Yomashvi, Mi Makam Karov, nevertheless, Mona Iman, he counts with them. So that's what Rabbi Shimon says, that even if he comes on day seven from a close place, he can join up with the people already sitting Shiva. Tosu says, Vim Tomar, Yom Kukua. But didn't we establish a concept that a portion of the day is the whole day? And so therefore he just comes for a moment and he's done. The Eshlomar could go and Shalom Amdu Adayin, Menachman Me'atzlan. So Tosu is saying, well, you know, they're done by the seventh day. So Tosu says, okay, maybe they're still, they haven't got up yet. So even though their day, even though the seventh day started, they're not actually done with the day because they haven't got up from, from, from Shiva. Uh, um, okay. So, so then Tosus also points out that Mitzvah Sayyam Kukul does not apply at night at all. That's another, uh, another point that Tosus makes. So Amar Mar, so Tano has this price. Uh, we say Gimel Yom Amar Rishonim, the first three days, Bami Makom Karov, if you come from a close place, Moni Mayim, you count, you count the Shiva with them if it comes from a close place. But when do we say you could count the Shiva with them? When the head of the household is still in the household. Rashi says that this means that the person who's coming is younger than the head of the household. And therefore, it's like he's just joining with their Shiva. But if the person who's jo- coming and joining the Shiva is an older person or greater or is the head of the household, you can't say that he's going to be mitzvah to the younger one, to join to the younger one who's less significant. So that, so it's a very big, complicated question today. How do we figure out who the Godo Abayas is? Case where there's a Lavaya in the land of Israel, and then it's one of the person, one of the kid, one of the family members goes and the other family members are back. How do we determine who's the Godo Abayas with those circumstances? The Bible, so the Gemara has a question, Let's say the head of the household went to the cemetery. He himself went to the cemetery to bury the dead. And so what will be the law there? Mahu, do we say, Rashi says, do we say it's like he's in the house itself because since he went to bury the dead, and so therefore he's counting with them, or do we say no? So the Mara says, Tashma, even if the head of the household goes to the cemetery, he can still count with them. And Mar asks, one second, what do you mean? Mone, mine, what do you mean he counts with them? Tanya, Mona, Atzma. But we just said in the previous Amud, it said he counts by himself. And Mar says, well, Kasha, if he came back within three days, he counts with them. If he comes back, if he, if he came back after three days, he counts on his own. Rashi says the name of a place that, that Rav said to the people of Tzalfoni. He says, if you come back, after you do the burial, if you come back, then, uh, then, then you, have, you could join with the people there. But the but if you don't come back within the first three days, then count, count the, the days of Shiva on your own. Says the Gemara Amahu Rabba of Bnei Machuza. Rabba said to the Bnei Machuza, Also, and the law is Lisu Basar Arsa. You people, you don't follow the coffin. What do you mean, don't follow the coffin? Because Rashi explains that they used to bring Kishamalichan Amita, me Babel Eretz Israel with poor. They used to, even back then, they used to bring the coffins from Babylon to the land of Israel. They ain't called Krovim Kul and Yechon Lavos at Eretz Israel. Not all the relatives could go up to the land of Israel. Malabana Meis Paraso and Mil And they used to just carry the coffin, either a Paraso or a Mil, and then they'd go back. 
So Rav said to these Bnei Machuza, you who follow the coffin, and then you go back, from when you turn your face back from the outer gate of the city, means to say you, they would escort the coffin just to the, uh, they would escort the coffin just to the gates of the city. When you turn back from the gates of the city, it's Lil Mano. That's how you start to count your Shiva. This is a very big question today because it used to be when I was growing up, they would basically carry, you know, uh, when Ovaya had was going to happen, they're bringing the mace to the land of Israel. They would take the body to Kennedy Airport in New York. And then, and then, then when they turned around, they started their Shiva. But maybe nowadays it's different because you, you, after you bring the, the Levaya, the, if you bring the mace to Kennedy Airport, then the mace goes on the airplane. Then they have the Zoom link. And so you're watching it on Zoom. So you're really not, you're not done with the uh, Levaya. You're still there. So maybe you shouldn't start your Shiva yet until the burial uh, actually takes place because you're going to be attending the Levaya on Zoom. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a shayla. Rabbi Shimon says, Rabbi Shimon said that in the Bible that even if you come on day seven from a close place, you still count to shiva with them. So when do we say this? That you count that you if you come on day seven, you can join with them. That that's when you come to the shiva house and you find the menachmen are with him. The, Come from, either this refers to this different approach. This maybe refers to the people sitting shiva, or maybe the people who are comforting the people sitting shiva. But you see that they're still there, so therefore you can join with them. But if they already got up, you can't join with them. So by Ravanan, so Ravanan asked the question, and Ninaru Amud, and we had this the same type of uh, the Masora Sashas points out that we had the same exact type of language Ninaru Amud and Mesechus Rosh Hashanah Amud Amud Al, but there it refers to a bezin. We're not sure if they finish their court case they, they, or if they adjourn for the day. It says, Here too, we have the same expression about the Shiva, that they made a movement like they were going to get up, but they didn't get up. Or maybe the mourn, the comforters made a movement like they were going to get up. So do we say that it's like he joined them or not? So Ma, what's the law taker? We're going to leave this question unresolved. Can you say that they think Whenever it's take take the lenient. Well, normally Meyer is making an important point. Normally, when it's take, we take the stringent position. But in this case, because it's uh, we say that by a mourner, by a shiva, uh, by the laws of mourning, we say halacha kamekol. So since it's uh, the lenient position by a, by a shiva, by a funeral, uh, by the laws of mourning in this case. So Gemara says gemir chavrei de Rabbi Abba a bit shkleftin. So they, they said, then Rabbi Yochan, the law is like Rabbi Shimon Gamil by Trefos. The law is like Rabbi Shimon Gamil by Trefos. We'll see what that means in a moment. The law is like Rabbi Shimon by a mourner. The Gemara says, let's analyze the statement that was said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. A. The law is like Rabbi Shimon by a mourner, like we said. That even if you come on day seven from a close place, we're going to say that you could join uh, um, with the shiva and you count with the number of days that the people who are sitting there. Fine, that's what we said. But, 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 Rabbi Shimon Gamil by Trefos, what does that mean? Like Rabbi Shimon Gamil by Trefos, what does that mean? So the Gemara says this means the following the Tanan. So, first, as a background, we say to we, we, we know that the uh, Gemara and Chulun tells us the mission, Chulun, Elohena Trefos, Elo Trefos. These are the, these are the uh, things that make an animal trefa, that make an animal uh, defective, the 18 trefos, that make an animal non-kosher, that, because we know that the animal's not going to survive long term. So uh, one of those things are as if the Bnei Me'ayim are punctured, if the internal organs, the intestines are punctured. So, so we learned, uh, but but if we learned in a brisa the Tanya b'nei ayim shenikfu. If you have these internal organs that are punctured, v'licha so tamtam. But then there's some mucus, some juice, some liquid liquid e uh, substance that comes out of them uh, and closes up the puncture kshera. So even though there was a puncture, if the puncture was sealed by some liquid that came out of the organs. Then we're going to say it's kosher. And what is this liquid? This is the juice of the intestines, the nafik agavducha, that you could squeeze it out by pressing too hard, by pressing hard on it. 
So that's what Rabbi Shimon Gamil said. And when we say the laws like Rabbi Shimon Gamil by Trefos, we mean that in the case of a liquidy substance from the animal itself that sealed up the puncture, it's kosher. My uh, so so the Gemara says, Amar Mandehu. So Mandehu said, Mandehu really means we don't know who, somebody, so so and so. So that's what he said. So Mandehu says that. So this is one of the Talmudian, but uh, Rashi Tehulim says we don't remember who this was. That's what Rashi Tehulim says. The, the people who were in Misadri, the Gemara, the people who wrote the Gemara or or edited it, they didn't remember who was a student. The Borat Yosef and the Rashash say that, no, it refers to one of the Amorayim who brought this teaching earlier. That is, say, either Rabbi Zera or Rabbi Abba. So that's either Rabbi Zera or Rabbi Abba said, according to the Rashash. So who is this? He said, He says, I'm, I'm citing this teaching in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. A, that the law is like Rabbi Shimon by mourners and the law is like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel by Trefos, I want to go up. I, I want to wish I could have the merit to go up and hear it straight from him. I want to hear it straight from his mouth. Get it straight from the horse's mouth. When he came up, he heard, uh, he found Rabbi Abba, the son of Rabbi Abba. He said, did Rabbi Yochanan really say the laws like Rabbi Shimon Gamaliel, but Trefos? He said, no. Uh, he said, no, I said, uh, the law is not like the law is not like uh, um, sure. the law is not like Rabbi Shimon Gamliel Trefos. Meaning, say we say it's not kosher. What about Rabbi Shimon Ba'avo? Is the law like Rabbi Shimon by a mourner? Amr Lei Pulkin. He says, well, that's an argument. Did my Rav Chizda Amr Alacha? Machein Amr Rabbi Yochanan Alacha. And Rav Nachman says, ain't Alacha. So Rav Nachman says the law is not like Rabbi Shimon by a mourner, but Rav Chizda and uh, Rabbi Yochanan say it is. So the ena lacha krash bag by trefos, the lacha krash bag and indeed we say the law is not like krash bag by trefos. That such an animal is not kosher, and the law is like krash bag by a mourner. The Amar Shmuel alacha kedivri amekel by avol. Shmuel said the law is like a a, a mourner when it comes the lenient one when it comes to mourning, as Ramayer pointed out a minute ago. So it says the Gemara, Hakola mesim kuan for all the dead. Medacha mitaso, I raise him a shubach. For all the dead, if you rush the funeral along, you, you hurry things up, uh, that's going to be praiseworthy. Uh, and, and the reason is, why is it praiseworthy to rush a funeral along? Because we're showing, as some of the commentaries say, because we're showing that we accept Hashem's judgment upon ourselves. And we're, we're accepting it, and, and whatever God gives us, we embrace. So that's, typically speaking, the reason why we don't delay a funeral. And we don't delay, even within the funeral, we don't delay. But but for the father or mother, I raise him a guna. For your father or mother, it's disgusting. It's not appropriate to do that. Why is it not appropriate to do that? Because uh, he, a person has to give their, their parents a proper eulogy. Um, but today, the Beis Hill writes, uh, the Beis Hill writes that nowadays, even for father and mother, we have the practice to rush and try to bury as soon as possible. Haya Arab Shabbos or Arab Yantiv. Let's say it was the eve of Shabbos or the eve of Yantiv. Oshayu Geshevim Mizalfim Amitaso. Or we have this Girsa the, the, by the Bach. The Bach had said, or if it was raining. And those days, you have to remember that in the land of Israel, they didn't have coffins. You put the uh, body into the ground directly. There's a merit to connect to the land of Israel. I raise the Meshubach. So if it's the father and mother, then you rush it because it'd be disrespectful on the, on the eve of Yantif or Shabbos to delay unnecessarily or when it's raining. Uh, because it's praiseworthy because the person, because everybody knows that it's not appropriate for it to rain on them or that you delay their burial until Motzi Shabbos or Motzi Yantif. You don't want to have to have to delay the burial till after Shabbos. So therefore you push it in and do it as soon as possible. Uh, uh, now we're going to say other distinctions between the father and mother and the others. For all the other dead, Ratsa Mimai Pasco, Ratsa Inu Mimai Pasco. For all the other, uh, for all the other dead, aside from the father and mother, if you want, you can limit your business. And if not, if you don't want to, you don't need to. This is talking about something that's a loss of money, where there's the loss of the principal, Dabra Ave, Dabra Ave. But for the father and mother, even for those things where there's going to be a loss in the principal, you still have to diminish your business. 
I'll call him Mason Kulam for all the dead. For all the dead, you could, you're, you have the option of bearing your shoulder. It used to be a practice that they would bear their shoulder as part of the mourning process. But I'll have the email for father and mother. Oh, it's you, you're required to bear your shoulder as part of the mourning practice. Practice. Nowadays, we don't do this anymore because it'll be a huko tula. It'll be a, it'll be disrespectful. People mock it and people don't walk around with bared shoulders today. So today, nowadays, it's not the practice. There was an incident with one leader of the generation, the Godo Ador, Shemes Aviv, that the, um, his father died, and he, and he wanted to do the, 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 this choitz, this bearing of his shoulder. And then there was another uh, great rabbi who was with him, and he said, oh, you're, you're bearing your shoulder, so I'll do it too. And now, so when the first rabbi saw the second rabbi, was like, going to have to do it. He didn't want to embarrass him, so he didn't do it either. So I'm Rabbi. So Rabbi says, who is this first Gadotor? That was Rebbe. That was Rebbe, who we know as Rebbe Huda Nasi. It's a big relevant in a moment why I said Rebbe was Rebbe Huda Nasi. And the Gadotor Sheimo was Rebbe Yaakov Baracha. The, the, the great rabbi was with him was Rebbe Yaakov Baracha. So according to this version of the story, Rebbe first bared his shoulder, but then he saw Rebbe Yaakov Baracha was going to do it, so he stopped. But there's an alternative version. He could Amri, God of Ador was Rabbi Yaakov Baracha. The God of Ador was Rabbi Yaakov Baracha. And the God of Ador Shimo was Rebbe. And Rebbe was the one with him. So the Gemara says, well, wait. Bishlam Ahmad Amar, God of Ador Shimo Rebbe. Makes sense. If you say the God of Ador was with him was Rebbe. Hainu de Nimda. That's why Rebbe, uh, that's why Rabbi Yaakov Baracha said, I don't want to do it. I don't want to force Rebbe Ula Nasi to have to bear a shoulder. But according to the one who says the Godel Dor was with him was Rabbi Yaakov Baracha, and the one whose father died was Rebbe, well then, Amai Nimda uh, uh, Why did Rebbe stop bearing his shoulder? Rashbag was the Nasi Ami. Rashbag himself was a Nasi. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel was a Nasi. And his father, Rabbi Yudha Nasi's father, was Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. And so therefore, Rabbi Yaakov Baracha would have, the whole, the whole world has to bear their shoulder when the Nasi dies, when the head of the community dies, when the prince dies. So Rabbi Yaakov Baracha should have had to bear his shoulder regardless. So the Gemara says, Kasha, it's indeed a, it's a Dean question. This uh, Kasha is not found, this difficulty, this word difficulty is not found in all the uh, uh, printed texts, or, uh, and it's only added in by the Marsha. Marsha edited it. I'll call Hamasim Kulan, Mistaper Lacha Shalashim Yom. For all the, so now we're going to have some a little tricky, but these are some of the most relevant laws that you're going to find for the laws of Shiva. And so it says, I'll call Hamasim Kulan for all the dead relatives, Mistaper Lacha Shalashim Yom. You get a haircut after 30 days. I'll other than Imo, for father and mother, Achi Yigaru Bil Haver. You only get the haircut after his friends are are shocked and they rebuke him for having his hair grow wild. So, so that's usually what Moshe Feinstein says. It's a little subjective. So we say that it's typically twice as long as it takes you to get a haircut. And, that, and then you can get the haircut uh, for the first time when you're a mourner. I'll call me some cool and the base of Simcha Achar for all the other dead, you can enter into a base of simcha. What's a base of simcha? It's a house of uh, simcha, a house of joy after 30 days. I love the email for a father, mother. You can only go to a base of simcha after 12 months. I'm a rabbi barbachana who is simcha mareus. So rabbi barbachana says, that that which we say that you can enter into a base of mishta after 30 days, that's only for simchas mireus. That's only for a meal that you do for reyim and ahuvim rash, he says, for good friends. But it's not such a great uh, like party. But a suda of a simcha, like a wedding, according to this version, you wouldn't be able to do it. So meaning to say, you, you wouldn't be able to go into, uh, when it says that a regular person could go into uh, after for when you're mourning for not for father and mother, you go into a uh, base simcha, a house of simcha after 30 days, that is only for a simcha smereus, but not for like a wedding. So the Mar challenges this because it says, Mesve, says in the price, so a simcha smereus, 
It says in the Brisa, for a Simchas Mareis, for this type of, for this type of, uh, of, of meal, which is not a full wedding, then, then you can't go into this party for 30 days. And after 30 days, it's permitted. And so we see from the Brisa that after 30 days, you could also go into a Simcha. This is how, this is how uh, Ralish explains it and Tosus explains it, that you could also go into a wedding after 30 days. Look at those. So it's Pirish Bukuntris. And what is a Simchas Mereya? Suda Sha'osim Reim Va'uvim Zelazah. And so therefore, that this is a, a, a party that you make for your friends. And it's only for this, this type of party that's permitted after 30 days. And, but, but the Simcha of a chasan, that would be prohibited even after 30 days of wedding. But Tanya, but we weren't in the bride. So it was Simcha Rami Lomareo Slamet. That, that both of them, you need to wait 30 days. So that's how Tosus has this gear. So it was Simcha and also, and also for Mareos. So Simcha Ula Mareos, meaning to say for a wedding and friendship. It's for both of them, you have to wait 30 days, not just, not just for the friendship. So also for the for the wedding for a regular mourner, you could go in after 30 days. Mm-hmm. That's how Tosus understands it. So indeed, Kasha, indeed, that's difficult because our first price it says that for a wedding for a non-relative, you also for a non-father or mother, you you're also prohibited after 30 days. So the Gemara says, I may more masti hachi, I may more talk like this. I'm a rabbi barakano, u a simchas mereos moto ikanis altar. For a simcha mereos, meaning to be with your friends. Uh, like a meal, you're allowed to go in immediately, but not, but not for a wedding. For a wedding, you'd have to wait 30 days. And where it says, can't be, but Tanya was simcha shoshim, or mareya shoshim. Didn't we say for both you need 30 days, even for uh, like a mareos meal? Where it says, lokasha, haba risusa, haba paranusa. Now there's two types of mareos meals. There's one is arisusa, and one is paranusa. This is uh, the arisusa, you can't, go in, you, can, you can't go in the first 30 days. That's where the person invites you to the meal, and we know you're going to have to invite him back eventually, but it's a long time. You know, it's no like, it's no quid pro quo. So therefore, that's a really big party. But for Anusa, you have to pay up right away. You have to invite him back like the next day or something. So that's not a simcha. That's just, you pay for lunch today, I'll pay tomorrow. That's not a real party. I'll call Mason Kula for all the dead. Korea Tefach, you tear the garment. Uh, tefach, which is three to four inches. For father, mother, you need to uh, reveal the heart. You tear over the heart, uh, and and that's and you have to uncover that because because you've lost the mitzvah of kibbutz ava aim, and the honoring the father, and mother is dependent upon your heart. So therefore, you have to uncover the heart. Rabbi Avol Maikra, what's the source of this idea? By Yechazak, David, David, Gadav, Vayikra aim. That after David was mourning for for his son who died, David Gadav, David held his garments and he tore them. And holding it is and tearing it is a little minimum of a hand breath. That's what he states. Uh, so I'll call him Asim Kuan, I feel lavish asara chalukim in Okara for all the dead, even if he wears 10 shirts. He only tears the upper one out. Although emo Kori is going for a father or mother, he tears, he tears all of them, all of the upper garments, but not the undergarments. Um, but he had like a turban or a headgear that he doesn't tear. Both a man and a woman have to tear. A woman for modesty reasons, she tears the, the lower one. And then what she does is she she turns the shirt around to the back, the choseras koresas elyon, and then she tears the upper one, so therefore the, the skin would not be visible. I'll call me some kuod rotsa mavio kame safashal rotsa eno mavio. On for all the dead, except for the father and mother, you tear the the hem around the neck. And if you want to absolutely rip it and separate it, you can. If you don't want to, you don't need to. However, but for the father and mother, you have to make a real rip there. Any tear which you don't do around the neckline is not is just a nonsense tear. 
Um, Rabbi Avros, Rabbi Avros said, my time with Rabbi Yehuda, what's the reasoning for Rabbi Yehuda? Because he says, when Elisha saw Elijah the prophet going up to heaven and he knew he'd never going to see him again, he says, he tore his garment into two. He held his garment torn into two, which means, uh, so it says in the verse, they held the garment by Yikreim Lashnaim Kiraim. So when it says he tore it, I know it's into two. So why does he say he tore it into two? That the tear needs to look like two. It needs to look like a significant tear. It needs to look like you ripped it into two. Now we say, for all the regular relatives, aside from the father and mother, you need to do shoel. Shoel is where you sew it up in a crude manner. And you would need to do that after the uh, shiva. Uma'acha, you can only do that after the shiva. Uma'acha, and you completely fix it. Acha shloshim, you can fix it completely after 30 days. For father and mother, sholacha lamed, you do this crude sewing only after 30 days. You can never completely fix it. Ba'isha shalalto la'alter, a woman, she, she's allowed to sew it up in this crude manner immediately, because it's it's disrespectful for the woman to walk around with the uh, with the torn with the torn garment that's not sewn up. Kiyasa Rabin, Rabin, when he came from er, from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Akol Amesim, he said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, for all the dead, Ratzah Korea Biad, Ratzah Korea Bekli. If you want, you could tear with your hand, or you could tear with a utensil. Rabbi Valimo Biad, for your father or mother, you have to uh, you have to only use your hand. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan, Akol Amesim, Kulam Li Befnim. For all the dead, you you tear the garment, the inner garment. You don't have to tear the outer garment. For your father and mother, you have to tear uh, um, the, the, it's not just publicly. You have to tear it above your the outer garment so, so that everybody can see the tear. So that So too, for the Nazi, you have to tear it for everybody to see the tear, so everybody knows you're mourning. But we have a contradiction. What's the contradiction? The Baraisa says that, the, and, and Rashi helps us here, that the Rebbe, the, the head of the court, and the Nasi, they're not equivalent to the father or mother. Meaning to say only with respect to the fact that you're not allowed to completely fix the tear. Doesn't that mean, doesn't that mean uh, that even for a Nasi, that is so. Doesn't this mean? Doesn't this mean uh, that that you need a that that even for a Nasi, and that you don't need to tear for him outside? That they're not the same. That the morning for a Nasi is not the same as the morning for a father or mother, and therefore you don't tear for him on the outer garment, but you could tear it inside. No, it means el uh, So. So what does it mean? So what does it mean? The Gemara says, levar, levar No, the Bryce doesn't mean to say even the Nasi. It means, except for the Nasi, that since everybody needs to tear for him, unlike the Abbezin and the Rebbe, but since everybody needs to tear for the Nasi, the Nasi, you, you have to you tear the outer garment as well for everybody to see. And, and indeed, Nasiya Shachem, that there was once an incident where the Nasi and Babel died, and what happened? He says, turn over this, this stool or this mortar here and stand on it and show everybody the show everybody you're tearing your garment. All right, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to address the questions. Shkoyah.